digital, digital, digital storefronts. A place to buy games for many a year, well until they close down. In this video, we'll take one last look at the next digital storefront to close down, the Xbox 360 store. On July 29th, 2024, the Xbox 360 store will be closing down. These digital storefronts have a limited life, time on consoles, as we've seen with the Wii, Wii U and 3DS store that have already closed down. It would only seem a matter of time until Sony does something similar with the PS3 and Visa stores. In fact, they already tried to do it a couple of years ago. But with these stores closing down, many a game will become lost to acquire by legal means. The 360 storefront will be no exception. The Xbox 360 store opened in 2005, when of course the Xbox 360 released, meaning it will be just short of being opened for 20 years. To me, the Xbox 360 store was the first true digital storefront for consoles. It was also the console to popularize online multiplayer for consoles. Look, I know the original Xbox did that, but the 360s when it really took off. Something I can't fully show off in this video is the evolution of the store itself, since I can't really go back and look at it in great detail. But the store did go through several big changes. For example, in the beginning the store sold only arcade and DLC, then they later added original Xbox games and on-demand games, which are full-on Xbox 360 games like the ones you would find in store. But now digitally, something that's not around in its original form is Xbox Live Community Games, later called Xbox Live Indie Games. Games are made using the XNA Game Studio framework. Games are made by small teams and had to be peer reviewed and tested by members of the community before full release. In 2017, Microsoft ended the program fully, meaning many of the games are now unpurchasable, but some are available on the store still. One last thing I want to talk about is how things used to cost Microsoft points. So you used to have to buy Microsoft points to buy things on the store. The Wii had something similar as well. But the problem with that is that it hides the real price of something you want to buy. Also, since you have to buy the points in certain increments, it means you'll never have the right amount for something you may want to buy, meaning you'll likely have to buy more points for when you want to buy something else. But they did phase out eventually, now you just buy things for the price they are. Well, let's look at the store. There are two main sections, one for the on-demand which is full-on games and arcade games which are smaller games. In this video I'll highlight games where it might be their last bastion, or just you know something really relevant to the time period, or just something forgotten by the time period. It's worth mentioning, if you see Xbox One under a game, it means it's been poured forward onto newer Xboxes. Also in something that's ported Xbox One it's pretty much I think available on the Series X as well. Xbox has been pretty good with their backwards compatibility. You're even going to play games from the original Xbox. Most of the big stuff has been ported forward. Some games even have some improvements, such as higher frame rates and HDR support. The first game I want to highlight is Alone in the Dark. Well, Alone in the Dark 2008. Since there have been many games called Alone in the Dark, with the newest one I've only just recently come out. This game has not been ported forward. Alone in the Dark 2008 is a very obvious time game. From just looking in like the general colour part of the game, you know they had like thing, fancy things that sound like fire effects, and even a DVD style episode selection for the game's chapters. You can even play the game out of order if you want to. But the game was not well received, had some cool ideas but was just very clunky. Also you can still buy this game on Steam after the 360 store dies, but from reading the reviews this does not seem like a very good PC port. Next game we'll look at is Anarchy Reigns, a platinum game. No one really talks about this game. But then again, it didn't sell well, and then it did somewhat okay critically. I'm actually yet to play this one, but I do know it's sort of a loose sequel to a game called Mad World on the Wii, which I was a big fan of. But unlike that game, this game has more focus on 3D action combat, which is how platinum describe it. What the game really is, is a multiplayer 3D arena fighter. It does have a campaign, but that wasn't the main selling point of the game. But like most multiplayer games, 
It doesn't have a huge pool of players, it dies out. But hey, you can play as Jack from Mad World. Also, like Mad World, it has a banger of a soundtrack. Good news if you want to still check out the single player, it's not too expensive to buy secondhand. Next is Armor Core 5. I'm not going to go much into this one since I haven't really touched the series, but buying the game is quite expensive physically and it's only £20 on the store. A few more quick ones with Chronicles Reddit Game, Assault on Dark Athena, which is one of the better licensed games from the era. Also, I want to shout out Azura's Wrath and Avatar Last Airbender Burning Earth. But I really like Azura's Wrath, and Avatar, I'm just surprised it's still available on the store. But I'm even more surprised I can play it on my Xbox Series X. This game is not good, but it was famous for being a game to get 1000 a gamer score fairly easily. If you're someone who cares about that. Oh, it's so awful, I'm dying. <sighs> How about we move on to Conquer Live and Reloaded, which was an original Xbox game, and it's a remake of Conquer's Bad Fur Day on the Nintendo 64, but with tacked on multiplayer. When I first started out this game, the intro video was struggling. Not sure that means there'll be other performance issues with this game. But the original Conquer is easily available through the Rare Replay collection. But then I just found out it might be able to play on new Xbox systems since I saw it on my Xbox Series X game library. Next up, we got Game of Thrones, a game I have literally forgotten about until I saw it on this store. This is an RPG of not great reviews, but good news, the game is not too expensive to buy physically if you want to experience it for yourself, I guess. In this next section, let's talk about some lesser sports games. Most of the big sports games get delisted after a few years, but the 360 store, we've got a lot of smaller sports games such as handball, as mob entries. Also, we've got cricket and rugby games which are still all on the store. Morphex, what the fuck is that? The store won't load the pictures, so I guess I'll never know. Sonic the Hedgehog, aka Sonic 06. You can also buy Sonic Generations and Unleashed, but these games have been ported forward with HDR and improved frame rates. But Sonic 06 got no such treatment. Probably because the game is bad and became somewhat of a joke. But it is fairly cheap on the marketplace. But if you're late, maybe check out Project 06, which is a fan remake of Sonic 06. How about a reboot, Bionic Commando, a 7th generation reboot of a NES classic. This is another one that definitely leans into the aesthetics of its time period. Critically, the game is nothing special, unless you like games with swinging mechanics. Also check out Bionic Commando Rearmed 1 and 2, which are Xbox 360 arcade games, which are more in line with the original NES classic. Something I haven't talked about is Kinect games where none of them have been ported forward, mainly due to the Kinect dying about a year into the Xbox One's life. So all these Kinect games will disappear in a official capacity when the store closes down. A lot of these games are not too expensive to buy physically, but remember there is a fair amount of digital only titles that will be lost to time. Naughty Bear, Bear Panic in Paradise, a sequel to the original Naughty Bear which was a game I was once excited for, before seeing the game was just an undercooked Hitman. But that game is not available on the store. But this one is more of the same, but smaller since it's an arcade game. The Dishwasher was probably one of the most well-remembered Xbox Live community games, which was a bloody side-scrolling brawler, which always kind of reminded me of a lot of stuff from Newgrounds. The developer went on to make the 2D Souls-like Souls and Sanctuary, Hey, there are also two Watchmen games in Xbox Live Arcade, which is basically just two parts out of one whole game. It was a time for the 2009 movie, and that's all I really have to say about it. I do remember the free trial didn't make me want to buy the game. Also, the game is still £13.49. Hey look, a Snoop Dogg game called Where of the Dog. 
I'll let this screenshot do all the talking for this game. There's still more to offer than video games. We've got DLC for all those video games. Let's take a moment of remembrance for all the DLC you're about to lose. We also got themes, that's right, you can still buy themes for your 360. Get them before they're gone. Sure, why don't I pay £2.39 for some themes? But there are some promotional themes that are free. I also had to remember how to set up the theme on 360, so eventually I did pick out a nice theme for myself. There are also game picks which fall into the same sort of category as themes. You can buy game picks for your profile. Definitely not worth it. We also got the Avatar Marketplace. Xbox has advertised the answers to me no one asked for. The Avatars have been kind of forgotten now, but you can still buy stuff for them on this store. It's also worth knowing you can unlock Avatar items by playing certain games. So that was my overview of the store and some of the games I wanted to highlight. As I said at the start of the video, most of the big games are not disappearing with this store. But a lot of the games I looked at are flawed and are going to be forgotten by many people. But they still deserve the chance to be played and looked at. That's not also mentioning the huge amount of licensed games that are no longer on the store or just never made it to the store itself. Here's a bunch of them I physically right here. Luckily most of them aren't too expensive to buy at the moment. Talking about price, do you think there'd be more going away sales for this store? A lot of these games are still pretty high in their price. But actually, shout out to Capcom for putting a bunch of these games in sale for around one to two pound. I'm still a few weeks out from the end of the store as I'm making this video, so maybe that will change. So rip Xbox 360 store and a bunch of those games that are going to be lost to time. And with that, that's the end of the video. Like, comment, subscribe, all those things. Recommend a video you're going to see there. Click a playlist maybe or something. Video ends shortly. What's on screen now? When soon? So goodbye. <laughs>